Thailand is home to the second largest Buddhist population of more than 63 million, only after China. Fossils found in the northern region of Lampang can be dated back more than 500,000 years ago. Buddhism has shaped every aspect of the social and cultural life of the people for more than 1,500 years. But how did Buddhism reach Thailand? During the 3rd century BC, King Asoka of Magat sent a mission to Suvarnabhumi, headed by elder monks Solna and Uta. Buddhism spread to Java and Cambodia from Sumatra. And spread across Southeast Asia. However, the first recorded Buddhist kingdom in Thailand was the Mon Dwaravati Kingdom. One of the most important and powerful empires in Southeast Asia was the Hindu Buddhist Krom Empire based in Angkor. From the 9th century to the 15th century, the Krom Kingdom included a large part of present-day Thailand. They followed Hinduism and Mahayana Buddhism. However, However as, as the, the existing, existing powers, powers faded, faded Sri Indraditya formed the Kingdom of Sukhothai in 1238 AD and declared independence from the Khmers. People of this new kingdom called themselves Thai, which means free. The Sukhothai Kingdom began to grow and extend its rule across the region of today's Thailand. Gradually, the Sukhothai Kingdom expanded across the region. Under King Ram Khamheng, he ruled the kingdom between 1279 to 1298 AD and was a great hero in Thai history. He is also credited with establishing the Thai alphabet, which is very similar to the Sanskrit alphabet of India. He made Theravada the official state religion. Sukhothai became a dominant power in Southeast Asia. The kingdom began to fall apart. From that point on, Sukhothai's vassal states began to abandon them, and the monarchy was unable to recover before the newly founded Ayutthaya kingdom. The great kingdom became fully absorbed by the Ayutthayas. Bangkok. The new capital city was built in the image of Ayutthaya. King Rama I became the founder of the Curtain Chakri dynasty. He got the Pali Canon translated into Thai for the first time during the end of the 18th century. The successive kings were titled Rama. The dynasty part of the Burmese kings King Mongkut or Rama IV was very important for Buddhism in Asia. Prince Mongkut spent 27 years as a monk, but agreed to become the king after the death of his half-brother. There are a few reasons to explain why no one ever decided to colonize Thailand, or at the time, the Kingdom of Siam. A very controversial topic that may cause conflict between our brothers and sisters of the Southeast Asian diaspora. This became a massive nation-building project that led to the modernization of today's Thailand. The Siamese realized that the Europeans put a lot of emphasis on knowledge, especially topographical knowledge. The Europeans used maps when borders were ill-defined. They used this as an opportunity to take the land. In Siam, the royal family sets a fashion for admiring Western things. Cars, Western clothes, and other European things were imported. By 1910, a series of updated treaties had established the borders of modern-day Thailand. That same year, King Chula Long Khorn died and was succeeded by his son, King Rama VI, who had been educated at the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst and the University of Oxford, which helped contribute to the leadership's westernization. 
new education systems and schools were opened, the Gregorian calendar was adopted, and even societal changes were encouraged in order to better match the West. As Siam now moved towards a constitutional monarchy and eventually became Thailand in 1939, the threat of any Western invasion was essentially non-existent. <laughs> Thank you for watching everyone. For those who are interested, stay tuned for the next episode.